Hello, welcome everyone. I'm very glad you're here. Um, this was a very last minute kind of thing. Um, over the weekend, I said to Christopher Allen of Brutus Monroe, would, you know, we really need to go live because we've been talking about going live together for a long time. And it, we just both keep procrastinating. I blame my children and he's got a business where he manufactures things. I mean, so we, we've got our whole list of excuses, but we've been wanting to go live together for some time. And uh, we decided just to squeeze it in today. So I appreciate you being here last minute. Um, just let me give an update before I bring Christopher in. Uh, I went live yesterday for like a play time. It was simply just things I wanted to play with. And it was a longer one because it was really just like bring your own stuff and we can just craft together virtually. Um, I probably won't do a uh, shortened replay of that. I've been tr I, last week I put up a shortened replay of a different live that I did so that if somebody doesn't have you know an hour or so, hour or two hours to watch a live, they can watch the shortened version. And a lot of people seem to like that. But for Sunday crafternoons, when I do that, when I just go on and play, I probably won't be able to do a shortened edited version because it's just a lot of random stuff where we do Q&A. Yes, I'm so glad a lot of you were there yesterday and I appreciate you being there. Today's uh, is about playing with some products from our friend Christopher Allen over at Brutus Monroe. And we're going to just, yeah, I say procrastinate instead of procrastinate. I know most people use crafting to procrastinate and they say procrastinate. But when you, I feel like when you work in the craft industry, you use procrastinate procrastinate yeah for any time you want to procrastinate i don't know when you make up your own word you can do whatever you want right so anyways um christopher and i are going to do some inky stenciling so let's bring christopher in mike can you bring him in since i have no idea how to do it there we go hello everyone <laughs> hello welcome hello, hello. thank you um, i'm so excited to be here I'm glad you're here. This has been something we've been talking about for a while now. If you all could let me know in the comments how our volume is compared to each other. If one of us should be bumped up or down, we can try to fix that. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear us okay. So how are things there, Christopher? You had an event this weekend, right? It's it's busy, to say the least. We we just had our spring fling event, and it was wonderful. It's 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 nice to talk about spring when it was snowing outside. So yes. it was it was very warm and springy inside, but it was snowing outside. But luckily in Pittsburgh, we have the 70s, I think, for the rest of the week. So ah. uh, we, we brought the spring, I think, to us. But yeah, we're just, just trying to get as much caught up as we can, because when we have an event, everything kind of shuts down. So now we're just getting back into the swing of things on this Monday, and you know, we're having a lot of fun here today. Yeah, and you had Gina this weekend, Gina yeah, Kay of Gina Kay Designs. It was so much fun. We were texting yeah. the entire time and back and forth because it's it's tough because since she was virtual, it was hard for she couldn't hear what people were saying in the laughter. So I was filling her in as we were kind of uh, bantering back and forth. And we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, w I had fun just visiting. Um, a few people said if you could just bump Christopher up a little bit. OK, then can you bump me down yeah. and they can adjust their volume on their computers? That should do it. OK. Well, we're yeah. set. So Christopher, I thought we should talk about aqua pigments because that's a big part of your line and something super fun to play with. So okay. why don't you start by telling us about aqua pigments and okay. give us just some properties of them. And then I've got some fun things to show that I played with today. And then right. I'm hoping you've got and you probably have some things to share, too. Yeah, so I'll head gonna... down to my top view okay. camera so that I can kind of tell you about the difference between there's there's a couple of different kinds of aqua pigments that we have and they have you know different properties based upon what that aqua pigment is. So I'll pull out I'm gonna pull out three of the different varieties that we have and then we can kind of go over them that way. So we have the creamy variety. Uh, the creamies are going to be the ones that they work very well on like a darker paper. Um, I don't know that we that you have any of the creamies yet because they're brand new. No, nope, but we I have don't those have um, in multiple uh, different colors. And then we have our uh, galaxy ones. So we have the, the those recently came out as well. That we have the Galileo, the Cosmo, as well as the Orion. And those ones 
have like a, a slight shimmer to them. They don't, they're not full shimmer, but they do have a slight shimmer to them. And then we have uh, our regular everyday ones, which would be the ones that are like coral and, you know, yellow, orange. And then the ones that you have, uh, you have the, uh, the Gilded, which is probably Gilded and Pearl are our two best selling of all time because they are just so incredibly pigmented. They have probably more mica than we should put in them just simply because I wanted them to be really, really, really shiny. Uh, sure. So most, I think most of them on the market, they probably use about probably half of the amount that we use, but I'm like, please put more, 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 more. So it, they're really, really, really sparkly. So those are the, the different varieties. And you can tell on the website which ones are which because they are actually listed below the difference between them. Gotcha. Okay, so which I know I really like this Gilded, which we'll play with today. It's the um, like a beautiful gold. And I also yes. have Poppy Field, which re reminds me of kind of a uh, like a copper. What yeah, other so what other ones do you have like that? So poppy field is going to be one that will be a metallic. Um, any of the ones that are that have shimmer in them will be listed on the website. We also have the uh, Wizard of Oz collection, which is what poppy field is from. Uh, okay. We have poppy field. We also have Tin Man, uh, which is going to be a little bit different than our regular silver, which is sterling. It's actually a okay. mixture of a pearl and sterling, so it gives kind of that. The Tin Man wasn't really, well, I mean, the, the original Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man was a much lighter than a, a, a regular tin color. So we wanted to try to emulate that. Uh, and it wasn't a deep, deep, rich silver, which is what our sterling is. Gotcha, gotcha. So are the Wizard of Oz ones, I remember seeing those. Um, yeah. You have them on your website. Are those all these kind of metallic-y look? Uh, two of them are metallic and two, two of them are okay. not. So and, the poppy okay. field is metallic and, and, the, and the tin, tin man. man is metallic. And then Glinda okay. is, I, it's, it has a slight shimmer to it, but I wouldn't consider it metallic. And then the Dorothy one is the most beautiful sky blue, uh, I uh, think that we have ever, that we've ever come out with. But they're all just a little, a little different. And you can tell the metallics again um, on the website because they will have a very distinct metallic look to them. Yep. And I hear someone running downstairs feverishly to the studio, so I have a feeling someone is bringing me. But <laughs> yes, so she literally just brought me, I mean, you should see how many aqua pigments she has in her hands right now. <laughs> so I have uh, all of the all of the, the metallics right now. Okay, so that's the, what the I want to see, the yeah. The metallics are Penny, Sterling, Pearl, and Brass. So okay. those ones are going to be the super, super ultra metallic. They're the ones that have a lot of, of the metallic pigmentation to them. And then we came out with uh, a rust that actually has a patina to it when it dries. So it has just a slight ah. uh, little bit, but whenever it dries, it actually dries almost with like a, with a turquoise in it. Um, but yeah, so, oh, I lied. We actually have five different varieties in the Wizard of Oz. We have a yellow brick road as well, which is a much lighter gold. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, I lied. We have six. We also have the Wicked Witch. <laughs> Look at that. So the Dorothy has some metallic. It's like a blue with a metallic. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it has a very, okay. they all have light metallics in them for the Wizard of Oz. But I don't want anybody to think that they're going to be like, crazy metallic so they they have a lot they're much lighter metallic than our original metallic set okay so i know i have i'm in the middle of reorganizing a bunch of stuff and i know i've got that wizard of oz set and i need to find it because those are beautiful but i'm today i'm going to demonstrate with um the gilded and the poppy field which both have that metallic look to it and then also the violet and the fuchsia which are just regular so these are just yeah. like kind of like a would you say like a what do you call liquid ink i guess yeah so there so it's it's a liquid pigment is what we call liquid it so pigment it is, okay so it's essentially um it's it's i don't want anybody to like re-ink their ink pads with it it's not that type no, of a formula no. okay it's, it's yep. made to it's made to move so it's made to okay. really shift and move around your around your page and you can do techniques you know like you said where you can you know, just drop color and you can, you can really do a lot of fun things with them, but you can really, the number one thing you do with them is you can just paint with them. So yes. uh, having additional yes. techniques, you know, for our products are probably 
the best thing. To be able to not just paint with them, but do so many other things uh, is really cool, I think. Well, I'll tell you, before we get demonstrating, the one thing I really wanted to show, because I think it's just gorgeous, is I know a lot of people like, well, there's an argument whether it's splatter or spatter, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, um, if you're ever looking for gold or silver, um, really good gold or silver, uh, spatter or splatter, whatever you want to call it, I like to put a little bit of this gilded on a fan brush. Just depends on how much you want. You can also put it on your table, like put a little drop on your table and pick it up that way. And then you, you can use any brush, but I like the fan brush because you can get some f little dots, some little droplets. And look at how vibrant, let me put that in my water so it doesn't dry that way. Look how vibrant those little droplets are. So this is the gilded. And so if you ever wanted like a nice gold splatter or like little mist or whatever, um, yes. I like the gilded. And then the sterling is the silver version. Uh, but you could do yeah. it with any of them. But it, I know a lot of people like gold and silver. And look at how those droplets look. And we'll let that dry, but it'll be nice. It'll stay nice and intense um, gold droplets. And also to, to kind of to, to carry with that, um, Kathy Z is actually who who introduced me to the splatter with the uh, oh good the yeah. So we created a product for her that has now become uh, super super popular, which is and I, I'm I don't know if you have this or not yet, but it's the shimmer the splash. little ones. Yes. So uh, these are ultra concentrated. So it's it's basically okay. this little bottle is equal to what would be inside of the large bottle with the pigment. And it comes with a brush. So if you don't have a okay. fan brush or you're not investing, you can literally just tap it and you will create that splatter oh, throughout same. the part and it comes with the brush. So nice. you don't have to, if you don't, ha you know, if you don't have a, oh, thank good. you. If you don't have a fan brush, um, then you can just, it's all in one and it makes it uh, really, really pretty. So these are the, um... So they're called, sh uh, this is called aqua, sh uh, the, the white one I have here is aqua splash. And then the yes. gilded that you shimmer. were talking about, Kathy, yep, that's the uh, shimmer splash. So if you so like that's white. That's you can tell the difference between the two. Yeah, the white Here's is, because I was looking for, I mean, Look I was searching for a long time for a really, really opaque white. And there was a lot of folks that were purchasing, there's a product out there, but it's very expensive. Like it's yes, and it you is. get like a giant container of it. And I was like, we don't need all that. You don't that. need that. So yeah, look at I that. wanted to, to figure out a, a smaller solution to to that. And it's it's very pigmented. And when it dries back, it's just absolutely beautiful. That, that that to me is a beautiful night sky that you just created in what? Yes. A second. <laughs> so this is the aqua splash in white. So if you like white spotter, and then some of this splatter, I did both. Some of it was done with this shimmer splash gilded, which is, has a brush, so that makes it super fast, right? Yep. So that's a shimmer splash gilded. Or you can use this, which isn't as concentrated, but you can see it gave beautiful. It's the same, yes. Yeah. And I'll sometimes even use the brush, like if I am, like if there's a little area on my card that I just want to add a tiny little bit of shimmer to, you can use the brush just as a brush too and yep. add just a little bit of shimmer like you know for holiday cards and things like that if you want to add a little shimmer to an ornament or to a christmas tree or whatever that may be uh, the white one works great for snow so if you want to just add a little snow onto a tree just pull out your brush and you're on your way and there are lots of other colors i'm just showing you the ones that i feel like have a um have a are you really universal right you know yeah, the aqua splash others, yeah. and the shimmer yeah yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, so, you know what I do sometimes, Christopher, I cheat when I do like a splatter or mist or whatever you want to call it. If like, I find a spot where I didn't get a little droplet and I wanted a droplet, oh, yeah. I will go in and do that. And that little you know, brush will let you do that too, I guess. Yeah. Yes, it, it will. It so you don't have to ahead. mess up a brush. <laughs> you can just yes, tap yes. it. Um, somebody asked, how visible is it on white? Well, the white wouldn't show up well on white, but here I'll do the, the gilded. Um, and by the way, do you want to tell everybody about the sale you're having because we're doing this live? Absolutely. So uh, because 
Jennifer and I are hanging out today together. We are giving you 20% off of all of the aqua pigments, as well as all of those over 400 stencils uh, at BrutusWinner.com that are also 20% off. And the best part is you don't have to put a code in. So if you put Yay. those items in your cart, it will automatically give you that discount at checkout. And uh, it makes it really easy. You don't have to remember a code. If you forget a code, it's, you know, codes make me nervous sometimes <laughs> because oh, yeah. uh, if, if, you, if you forget it, then you're like, oh my goodness, how do I get in contact with somebody? Which yeah. is pretty easy here at Produce Monroe because you can just call us, but uh, you don't need a code. So it does it automatically for you as soon as you put it in your cart. Uh, somebody was asking, yeah, can you use like colored paper? For sure, you can use you oh, can yeah. do this stuff on anything that you want. I mean, you could do this on bright blue. I did it on black. You can do it on white, really on anything at all. So um, if there's a link below that shows you the supply list of a lot of the things that I'm I'm thinking I might use today, but also it's all in the description below too. And if you just add it to your cart, it will the sale, the 20% off shows up, right? And that's off it's of the aqua it. pigments and the stencils. Yep. Isn't that right. awesome? Yay, yay. Okay. So what are you doing? You're doing some some splatter I'm just, spatter I'm just there? doing some splatter on some uh, a piece of, of color cardstock. We here call this, uh, it's, it's, the real name is Lagoon, but it's really Jennifer McGuire Teal. So yes. this is, I mean, really <laughs> when I pull it down, it almost, it almost disappears in the border, but you can see oh, how it, I mean, it does work very well on even lighter colors of the cardstock. Um, again, on white, you're going to see that it, it kind of disappears, but we do have several colors in the splash because there are some folks that I've learned that do not want to invest in a full aqua pigment just to splash onto their project. Right. So by right. having a smaller option in white and black, and uh, we, we have several colors that we've come up with now because really we just listen to our partners in creativity, which is what we call our, our customers. And we just say, <laughs> okay, what color do you want? And then because uh, we actually just released a black, which I was like, mm, are we really going to use a lot of black to splatter on cards? And it has been doing very well. So I guess we are using oh, black <laughs> to splatter on good. our cards. So bravo yep. to Kathy Zilski for inspiring this, our friend Kathy. She sure did. Yes. This is, uh, somebody asked, Darlene asked, this is the one that Kathy inspired? And Correct. I know she's got videos. I will try to find those videos after this live and I'll link it below so you can see. This is this Shimmer Splash Gilded, which is yes. the same as this, but more concentrated, right? Yes. A little more it's concentrated? Very, it's basically, yeah. yeah, basically the, the same amount of mica that is in the larger bottle is almost this is is almost about it's it's like a one to eight ratio of what's in the two. Gotcha. So it's it's very, and, very so I would say you don't want to really paint with this one. I mean, you can add little dots and add a little bit of shimmer, but this is like it's very, very, very pigmented. Yeah, so this one's kind of more universal, I guess, but right. it just depends yeah. on what you do. I wonder if Kathy's here. Kathy, did you hear know. your ears burning? I, I should have told her. People are tired, so she might be here. Yeah, next time we'll definitely have to go live, get her on here too, because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. She's here. Yay, Kathy's here. Hi, Kathy. We were talking about <laughs> you and Kathy. how brilliant you are. Yes. Kathy's the best. Okay, so um, let's see. I thought I would show something fun that you can do with stencils. This is really inky, so I put on black and I have an apron on because I was making a mess of myself before playing with this. Um, and then if do you want to show something too? Yes, so I'm going to show uh, a technique where you can actually use the aqua pigments to do kind of like a relief. So yeah. uh, I'm going to be doing some stamp reliefing and you're going to be doing some stenciling. So I think it's the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And so remember, you can use these aqua pigments to do watercolor. So you could put a little, it's got a droplet, you could put a droplet like on a palette and pick it up and paint with it. You can go direct to your paper. You can add water to drops of it to make it a little bit lighter color. But um, we're going to do more unique things with them today. But remember, they can be used just for watercolor too. Oh yeah, very simply. So I have a stencil here, which by the way, Brutus, I did find the packaging for it. Now I can't find it again. It's the, <laughs> the 
here it is. I found it. I, I texted him like, I can't find what this is called, but I found the package. It's called the Funky Fun Stencil. And I'm going to do a very kind of inky, this is one of those that the, it's not intended to give you a perfect looking result. It's intended to give you like an inky, um, artsy looking artsy looking result. So I thought this, the design of this stencil would be good, but I've done it with some others and it works really well with a variety of stencils. So this is the funky fun. And remember he has 20% off his stencils right now. So, and you, what do you have going on over there? So I'm going to uh, create with, so this is one of my uh, favorite stamps from our new release. It's called Butterfly Lace. Mm. I was going to use the borders. That was my first intention, but I have no idea where it is. So this one, <laughs> was, <laughs> this one was sitting next to me on my desk. So this is the one that I'm going to use instead. And I'm going to show you how to do almost like a, a batik relief. Uh, of, of this is the this is the one that I made the other day. So I'm going to show uh, you how to do this and create so a, pretty. A, really pretty, a really pretty relief. And it will work with this one too. It's just I wanted to Good. use the border, but it's it's gone missing. <laughs> so are you heat embossing with it? I am. So I'm going to stamp okay. it first with our uh, with our embossing ink, and then I'm going to heat emboss actually in white, which will probably. Uh, make some folks nervous because it won't look like there's anything there, but I promise you there will be something but it'll once be we there. start adding color. <laughs> okay. And while you do that, I have watercolor paper here. You could use um, any watercolor paper I'm using. I, just because I had this out from yesterday, the Alta yeah. News water, watercolor paper, it's hot pressed. You could use whatever your watercolor paper, anything that handles water a lot, because I'm going to put a lot on here. And what yeah. I did is I... I misted my paper a bit here. I've got it taped down onto a board here just so I can move around. And I'm going to lay that stencil onto the wet cardstock. Now the nice thing about misting the cardstock is watch, it kind of holds that stencil in place a bit, all those little pieces. So I have my stencil on watercolor paper that was lightly misted. And then I am just going to start playing because these are just fun to play around with, just drip wherever you want. I think I'm gonna use um, the violet and the fuchsia, which are just um, beautiful colors. So it's kind of, it's like a watercolor pigment, I guess you could say. And then I also have gilded, which is that really nice metallic gold, and poppy field, which is kind of like a, a little bit of a, a poppy field color. I don't know <laughs> what you call oh, yeah. it. But these have that metallic look to them. And I'm just gonna start dripping some on here. And you'll see that because the stencil is just laying on the cardstock, notice how the um, the color goes behind the stencil. See where it's kind of um, going along the pattern of the stencil? It's going behind it. That's okay. For this technique, we are. That's what we kind of want to have. Yes. And it looks like and I'm I using a lot. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to let everybody know that I'm switching over. I switched from the embossing ink to our alabaster pigment ink only because since I'm embossing this in white, it just it, it will just add more to that uh, to the opaqueness of the white. Ah, there you go. Um, Amy asks, can aqua pigments be mixed together to make a new color? You sure can. The only thing you want to make sure is keep a color wheel uh, nearby because what can happen is that you can make brown very quickly. Uh, but we ah. do have actually something that we, we offer at Brutus Renault. It's called the Stick and Stamp Pigment Palette. And this is a great way yes. for you to mix your aqua pigments because you can actually add two of the lighter colors. And then the centerpiece here is where that new color will emerge. So it's a little bit easier for you to organize uh, when you're actually doing the pigments. And it's great because this is a thick uh, plastic. So if it dries on here, the aqua pigments can be reconstituted. So what that means okay. is if they dry, you can just add water and you can use them again later. Nice. And I'm and using, was, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say that's, that was important for me because I walk away often from my aqua pigments. Yeah. <laughs> and, I get uh, that. I want them to be able to be used later. So I dripped on those four aqua pigments that I showed you and sprayed it pretty generously with water. So this is pretty wet on here. 
And I'm just kind of moving some of the metallic around just to kind of spread it and kind of mix it a bit, but I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. You just, oop, I moved it. Dang it. Didn't mean to do that. I should have taped it down. But that's okay. That's It'll okay. still work. Yeah. So now the, if you want this technique to work the best, the best thing to do is to walk away and let it dry. It's really best to let this walk dry on its own. However, we don't have time for that today, do we? So yep. I'm going to, while Christopher talks some, I'm gonna heat set this a little bit, just slowly to dry it, but not to do any kind of damage to it. But it's best if you just walk away. Um, Christopher, folks are asking if the, these splashes are on sale. They're not, just the they pigments, right? Yeah, so these are not on sale, but the, the big aqua pigments are. Yeah, the big All ones right. are, the little ones are not. Okay, I'm gonna try to heat set this. Okay. And I guess I'll heat set at the same time because then we won't be doing those a separate time. <laughs> there you go. But I think they could probably still hear us. I hope so. I can still hear you. Okay, good. Do you hear my heat gun a lot? I'm sorry. Um, I think it's like an, an equal you and heat gun, so it's not. Fair. Okay. All right. If, if you guys, yeah, if you have questions, let us know. But yeah, the the sale is on stencils and these bigger aqua pigments. Yeah. These aren't on. These are not on sale. No, the little guys are not on sale. Did you say? Is there a white aqua pigment? Like a white in this? There is or, a white aqua pigment. Okay, good. There's a white, and there is also a pearl. So I, I guess I should to touch on that uh, the white and the pearl are going to be two very different just because the white is just the the stark white and then the pearl is actually going to have you know some some pigment into it okay very cool i'm going to heat set this some more um darlene the one kathy z can't, kind of came up is the shimmer splash gilded the little jar which is just like this one but a, a bit more concentrated all right Sorry, we have to heat set, folks. But that's, okay. you know. And I'm going to actually reset mine because uh, have you ever put your finger directly into your embossing powder? Oh, yes. You leave a <laughs> fingerprint behind. That's exactly what just happened to me. <laughs> I'm not going to. No, you know, Sue, I'm, I'm not melting the stencil because I'm keeping my heat moving. I don't know. Can you melt a stencil with a heat gun, Brutus? I don't, or Christopher? I, don't think I always you can. do that. I don't, I don't uh, okay. think you can because it's uh, the, 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 just by the sheer way that you make a stencil, it's done with high heat and a laser. So I don't think, I think it would be very difficult to melt the stencil. Okay, good, good. But again, normally I would walk away. It would give significantly better results if you just walk away. Because did you see how I kind of moved the stencil a bit before when I didn't mean to? If I would have walked away, that wouldn't have happened. Yes, I will mute. Sorry. Oh, we have a question. So the question is, uh, what is the difference between Sterling and Tin Man? So Sterling is going to be a... So here, I can actually show you. So Sterling is a very, 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 like kind of a, a darker, I would say a darker silver and then tin man is a much lighter silver so i'm hoping you can it's going to be hard to to show on camera but the tin man is a much lighter silver than the sterling is it actually has some pearl that's been mixed in with it so it's just a lighter shade that's all and there's another question does the pigment stain the stencil when you dry naturally um with reds you may see a tiny bit of staining but uh, you you shouldn't see too much. It should be you should be just fine. Sometimes maybe around the edges, but if you spray it with alcohol, like I know that Jennifer has done in the past when I've watched her videos, you shouldn't have a problem. You should be just fine. Let's see. I'm not, I'm glad I'm not the only one that loses stuff in my craft room. Well, yeah, my, I think my issue is I have about 12 people that are in the production studio on any given week. So everybody is a really good helper with helping me clean things up. But 
finding things after they've been cleaned up is, uh, I think, is the issue. Yes, Christine, that's the perfect way to describe it. The Tin Man looks like aluminum, a lighter silver, just like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Excellent description. I might, I might use that description. <laughs> oh yes, Jennifer, you are still muted. I don't know if you, if you want to still be muted or not. I absolutely was talking to you and wondering why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why isn't he, why isn't he speaking to me? Oh dear. <laughs> I'm like, I chased him away already. Hey. <laughs> Sorry about that all. Sorry about that. I'm getting another one started here that I can set aside. You can see how it bleeds behind the stencil. It would be cool to, like, what, something you could do here is, I don't think I have a paper towel handy. Um, Mike, can you grab a paper towel? You could stop here and let it dry and see how that color, that, that concentrated color kind of bleeds behind the stencil. So that's actually behind it. And if you let it dry, you're going to have that color in those areas and you can just go like this and pick up some of that extra color and you could get a really cool looking background by just taking it off at this point you know like let it dry here yeah. and then take it off and you can I even use another piece of paper instead of a paper towel oh, and then yeah. you get you get that relief yes see i should have done that but i'm going to keep right, going because you know cause i'm going to heat set okay and i'm going to just keep going with this Again, these are very concentrated, so you could use less if you want lighter, you can use more if you want darker. And you can see the pink and the purple I did, the fuchsia and the violet are just, um, I love getting inky, are just color, but the poppy field and the gilded have that metallic. So you can see how it kind of sits, I'll show you a close up here. It kind of sits more on top of the paper um, because it's got that metallic to it, but it'll, you know, if you add more water to it, it'll it'll watercolor more. Does that make any sense? This stencil, I f I don't remember what it's called. When when um, Mike, can you tell me what that stencil is called? It's in my supply list. This one here, the the one I'm dribbling on now. All right, so I dropped lots of color there. Mike's going to give me the stencil name here in a second, and now I'm going to spray that pretty generously with water because I want it to move around. It should be on there. It it's a slim line. Leaves? Is it what? Elegant leaves. Elegant leaves is what this one's called. So now I can move some of that metallic around. And I like where some places it's a little bit heavier and some are lighter, but you can do this however you want. You could do the whole thing one color. Uh, totally up to you. All right, so I'm just right, going to take a little bit. So I think we're good. All right, there we go. So you got your fingerprint in it? I do that all the time. I do. So I, yeah, and I ended up actually switching over from watercolor paper because I, it's a larger stamp. And I just switched over to uh, Notre Mama's because Notre Mama's okay. is, um, is a cardstock that can take a lot of liquid because it's 140 pounds. So um, I just switched over to that one for the technique that we're doing. I wouldn't suggest like actual painting watercoloring on Notre Mama's, but if you're just applying color, you're, okay. you're completely Yes, um, Kathy's here. Kathy said, uh, Kathy, yes, we were talking about you. I don't know if you were here to hear it about how you were the inspiration behind this. Um, yes. And yet she asked, Kathy asked if I'm using watercolor paper. Yes, I am. But you could, for what I'm doing, you could use uh, Not Your Mama's cardstock, which I've talked about in my videos before. It's the heaviest weight white cardstock that I have in kind of in my stash. And it m makes for really good, um, card bases or if you want to add a lot of water or do a lot of techniquing to something it's just it's just beautiful yeah i'm using um this simply because it was on my desk but i you can do this with any watercolor or super super heavyweight paper look at christopher's mixing colors so i'm using the cosmo orion and galileo which are the new galaxy colors and i'm going to what i do whenever i'm starting to paint is i will start mixing colors so that we can have third and fourth generation colors so that it doesn't, you don't have those harsh lines that you will see sometimes. And I'll kind of show you as I'm doing it, but it's my favorite way to watercolor a background because it's, it's very, very simple. 
Okay. And I'm adding more gilded because I just love it. I love how little goes a long way. It sure does. Right, so and I'm just spritzing the background of my Nacho Mamas ever so lightly, just so that we have, we'll have some there movement. With nice, nice. And Kathy. I'm just gonna add color. Oh, sorry. Kathy, no, I'm just adding uh, color. I'm done. Okay, Kathy, can you put in your, in the chat, the video that you've done with the Gilded so that people can check that out afterwards and get some more inspiration. I'd appreciate it if you could. Hopefully she's still here. Okay, so you, your mixed colors and now you're painting over your white heat embossed image, right? Yes, and I'm just, the thing is that you wanna be, you know, generally they tell you not to be super heavy handed when you're watercoloring. When you're doing a technique like this, you want to be as heavy handed as you possibly can because we're actually going to end up removing color. So we're going to let it kind of sit in and you just kind of want to start adding your color into the areas that are going to kind of catch the color. But the nice thing about the Brutus Renault embossing powders, which I think holds true for most embossing powders, is that it is going to give you a relief whenever you're actually adding the color. And you can see here how the butterflies are starting to take shape. And it's, uh, I think it's gonna be a really, uh, really pretty look once we're, all, once we're all done. So could you do what I did and just kind of drop a little bit of drops directly onto that white heat embossed image and then move it around with some water? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But what, what you're doing gives you more control of where the color goes. So it's nice Correct. to be able to have both options. Yeah, for this technique, oh, so I like to have a I like to have a little bit more control because then I can make sure that I'm getting color in all of the areas that I want. And that's because I'm only using three colors. So if I was using more of the shades, kind of like you did, then I would probably have just kind of dropped it down in and, and kind of let it do its own thing. But you'll notice something very cool that happens with the Not Your Mama's cardstock. Oh, it is a yes. cotton-based cardstock. So because of that, it, it's, it, it creates almost like a tie-dye look. So you can see here how it starts to kind of marble, I guess you would say. And that's because it's so thick and so fibrous that oh. it adds, I mean, it's just, it's really cool. Look at that, look at the edges. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's so pretty. How it's like wicking out. I don't know what that's called. I'm not. Oh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's it. Wicking out. Yep. Is that what it is? Listen to yep. me. I can pretend to be that's an artist. Exactly. Kathy, yes, I my nails happen to match my <laughs> projects. I was um, gonna say it's perfect. <laughs> did Kathy was Kathy able to add her video? I'm hoping um, she will. I'm hoping she will. If not, Mike, give her a text. Ask her to please add it because I don't want to. I don't want people to miss it. Okay, so yeah, we we're really both using the aqua pigments in different ways. I dropped directly over a stencil and added water, and I'm letting it dry. Now, Christopher, white heat embossed an image, and he's putting them on top with a brush, and he mixed his own colors too, which allows you to get more control of where what colors you get where, and that white heat embossed image is resisting it, so have color around that white. So pretty. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to let these aqua pigments dry onto my palette, and I'm just going to okay. use these later. I mean, I might even use them in my live tomorrow. So you don't have to waste any of this. I suggest getting yourself one or two of these uh, pigment palettes just because you can leave the stuff on yeah. them. The reason that they were actually designed this way uh, was so that you can take your, your stick and stamp mat. So this is just one from Crop and Create. Yep. You can't get this one, unfortunately. But... Um, it's just the one that was handy sitting next to me. It actually was designed so that you can watercolor on your stick and stamp. So it fits perfectly uh -huh. at the top. You put your you put your watercolor piece uh -huh. here, and then you can watercolor while it's onto your stick and stamp mat because water will not hurt your stick and stamp mat. You just blew my mind. <laughs> so it makes it really easy. <laughs> I have one of those, but I never put it together, and it will hold your paper flat while you do it. So this Correct. whole, no, I could, yeah. I could have done this on my stick and stamp. You know, you learn things, right? You learn it's, things it's, as you go. Because the problem is I was always doing larger pieces. And generally when you're watercoloring a larger piece, you have to tape it down. So the problem is you're using a giant piece of watercolor paper and you're only using an A2 size part of it. So by using the stick and stamp mat, you don't have to then 
use a giant piece of watercolor paper. You can conserve it and you only have to use what you need because it's stuck right to your mat. There you go. There you go. And yours is on Not Your Mama's cardstock, which Correct. is that heavyweight white. It's bright white. It's heavyweight. And I have, I've talked about it in my videos before. I've got a whole stash of it. Excellent if you're making a card that has a lot on the front. It's a nice, strong card base. What is it? A hundred and... It's 140 pounds. 100, 140 pound, and it is the thickest that I have, and it will hold up to a lot of techniques with very little warping. I used watercolor paper here, but I bet you could use Not Your Mama's cardstock for this too. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna show you all real quick the reveal. This is my favorite part okay. whenever you blot it because it okay. gives you that kind of batik look to it. So when you peel this off, you're gonna see oh. you just have the most gentle and beautiful uh, That's so watercoloring cool. in the background. Now you can also go back over top of this if you want and add more color. I'm kind of okay with this because I like the yeah. idea that it's much softer, but you yes. can go back in and you can add, but I just, I mean, I'm so in love with the oh, way that this so is looks. <laughs> I mean, you could just trim that down to an A2 card front and put a nice sentiment right in the center and you'd be good. Yes. That's that's so what I'm going to do. I'm actually, I'm actually going to use the nice thing. The way that I designed this set was I design things for me and just hope that everybody else loves them. And <laughs> so this, uh, this, I knew that this was going to be a very, you know, large background. And I was like, mm, it's, you can use it and you can utilize it in different ways. But I wanted to be able to cut out all of the butterflies individually. So I designed a die set that each butterfly you can actually cut out separately. So instead of always using it as a background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut out this butterfly and use that on the front. So we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> Perfect. I'm looking for my, oh, I wanted to show. Uh, somebody was talking about how they've used their sticky mat so much. I got a new sticky mat out to show you. Um, I, I won't admit to how many of these I've bought, but if you ever need to clean your stick and stamp mat, he has a matte mist. Is this what you recommend? This, this is what I 100%, use. 100%, yes. Okay. It's, it's, it's a very light, uh, light, non-abrasive um, cleaner. And this smells like hydrangea, so that's nice too. But this is a really good option for cleaning up your stencil. I like to keep one, I, I use these a lot. So I keep one that is new all the time just to have a backup, but you can reuse, like in here in my Misty, I have one that's, I could clean it if I want to, but honestly, I don't like cleaning, but we've talked about that before. So you can see there's a little bit of stamp, but it works fine. And this will also, giving it a gentle bath will also help bring a little bit of that stick back. So you can keep, um, keep it and use it for a while. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Christopher, can you show the technique you just did? You had a card where you did it with this border. Can you show that card again? Yeah. Absolutely. If you can find it, because it's hard to find I, things during a live. I was to say I moved it. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Oh, okay. here it is. Um, so this is the so this is the same technique that I just did, but instead I used that beautiful border. And it was so simple. You just let the you let the aqua pigment do its own thing. You just let it sit, and when you release, now this was done so on pretty. watercolor paper. But you could, again, this type of technique, you could absolutely do on Not Your Mamas because you, the water is still going to flow very well on the Not Your Mamas. Um, I also, uh, Kathy, my friend Kathy's here. She asked what this was called. The, it's the Aqua Splash White. She was asking what that was called. By the way, this stamp, this stamp set, I'm really excited about. And I'm, if we have time, I'm going to show you something you can do with it. But I think you need to know, look at, there are these stencils that you can use to color in so you could do like a rainbow it's like they're layering yeah, so stencils each, to color each so of these each, so each stencil does one so they don't line up so like for instance right. that stencil that yep. you have i believe does the one on the left oh, just i just don't want okay. to think i see yeah so for the like say you have this image here you line up this to color part of it then you move it over and this colors out, uh, colors other parts of it, and then move it over again, and it colors more parts of it. And then there's a stencil for this one, and a stencil for this one. So I'm yeah. not going to be demonstrating that today, but I know who's going to want to use this. My <laughs> little Lila loves layering stencils. So I'm going to keep this out, and I know she can use some of these sentiments for cards for her friends. 
I thought she would come down here, but she's, I think she's upstairs snack. She got home from school. She's snacking and crocheting. So, you know, that's how it goes. Um, somebody asked about the difference between uh, these sticky mats and other mats. Now there are grip mats out there, different types of grip mats. Christopher had this one long ago. He's had this one for a while. See what it's, it's, if you've ever seen like a cricket, um, cricket, you know, the cricket where you cut your own shapes, it has like a sticky mat that you put your paper on and it holds it while it cuts. That's kind of what this is, but it's just the yeah. right stick for, um, for card making. And I used to cut up sticky mats to fit my Misty and then sweet Christopher came out with, um, the sticky mat that fits just right inside of Misty. And it has just the right amount of tack, kind of like a painter's tape tack, I guess you could say, yeah. that will mm -hmm. really hold it still in your stamping tool. Uh, Jennifer so is actually the reason that that sticky stick and stamp mat exists because I remember, oh my goodness, it was probably four years ago maybe, I sent a text message to Jennifer <laughs> and I said, wait a second, I said, are you cutting up mats uh -huh. and putting them into a misty and she was like yeah she's like it's like the best thing that you can do to to i said hold on i said i'm going to invent one that <laughs> literally is just for us and she was like that's going to be the most wonderful thing ever because i have to cut these things up and it took me about a year and a half to find the right manufacturer Oops. but i'll never forget whenever i sent her the picture and she was like it happened it really happened that's it <laughs> that's it yes i was so excited and the nice thing is the edge this little decorative edge is not sticky which i'll show you something hopefully here in a moment to um to why that's a good thing and normally so i have two misties that i have set up let me get the other one out so Only i have two? well no i've got more christopher come on now <laughs> i was gonna don't say, share I our I have secrets like <laughs> I have quite a few. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. So I have uh, the waffle flower grip mat in here, and that is in place of the, um, the mouse pad that's normally in it. And I keep, I can put this on top. I find when I really want to hold something like right here in the center of my Misty, this is what's going to hold the best. This is the best of the stick. So I can place this here and stamp on it, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. When you want to take it off, what you do is you just curl it like a taco and the cardstock comes off easier. Then you don't have to um, worry about tearing your paper, but that will help get it off. This one's a pretty new one. That other one I showed you is brand new. A lot of times what I'll do is I keep it, I'll keep it underneath the mouse pad version. So it's under here and when I need it, I can take it out. And also this is great for holding paper when you stamp with like a thick cling stamp. You can't use this or a thicker grip mat with a cling stamp, but you can use this because it's so thin. So lots of uses for it. And you've and seen the, me use the, it in videos many times. The, the 2.0 version will actually be here hopefully next month is the, nice. is the goal, yes. And that's, nice. I guess you guys here are hearing it first on, <laughs> on Jennifer's channel that it will be I'm available. I'm excited. Hopefully next month. Yeah, the only difference with it is it's still the same great map, but we've um, added a magnetic back to it. So you will not have to use any magnets at all anymore because it will stick perfectly in place no matter what. Nice, I like it. Now I'm gonna take this stencil off. This is one that, remember I dropped a bunch of aqua pigments on, use some water on it, and then I heat set it. Normally, I wouldn't heat set it. I would just let it dry. But look at the cool look you get. Look at that. Oh, wow. Isn't that beautiful? Super easy to do. So you could do a few of these with like um, different stencils, a variety of different stencils. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is metallic shine to it because of the gilded and the poppy field that I used, isn't that pretty? And here are two others that I did before just to see if it worked with heat setting. This one is the same same colors, looks just looks a little different. And this one, I didn't do the purple. It's just the pink, the poppy field, and the gilded. And this one, I removed the stencil before it was dry. But you can see how you can get really cool results with this. Another thing you can do, Christopher's doing some die cutting over there. Here, I'll show you something else you can do, but first, Christopher, what do you, what do you have going on there? Okay, so what I did was I just took the coordinating um, die that will cut out all of your butterflies, 
and I cut out this butterfly because I really want to use uh, one of our products that I can't use enough of because I think it's the coolest thing. Um, and it's our Punchetto roll. Um, oh, and, yeah. and so I'm going to use that for the background of this. Cause the thing is like, we could just put a piece of color cardstock behind there and call it a day, but this Punchetto roll is so cool. And um, I'm just going to take a little piece of it out and I'm just going to use that for my, essentially for my background paper instead of just background paper. And this Punchetto roll, which is one of the first two that we've come out with, is actually, it has little butterflies cut out of it. So, I mean, it makes sense to me to put butterflies with butterflies, but I'll show you. And actually, this reminds me, Jennifer, of, uh, of a video you did, I think it was many moons ago, maybe not that many moons ago, but you did, you used... Um, that sheer netting that you normally use uh, for like when you're doing wedding favors to do shaker cards. Was that you that did that video? I think it was. Um, yeah, the tool. So, but yeah, yep. the tool, but that's what this reminds me of. So you can hopefully see oh, through there. Oh, look at there. that. Um, it actually, and I wish, hold on. Of course I won't have a piece of, oh, here we go. So you can actually see through here that they are actually little tiny butterflies that are actually cut out of this foil. So now when we put this butterfly on top, it's going to give kind of that, like, I love a card where they're like, how did they do that? And I'd say that this is definitely one of those cards that people are going to be like, how the heck did they do that? <laughs> so I, uh, I just added a little punchetto in the back and it, it's a great fun little product. I mean, you get three yards in one roll and um, it's, it's something new and fun. And I love new and fun. Definitely. Definitely. That's pretty. It adds a little bit, a little bit of shine to it too. I wanted to show you, um, you all, something that you can do with the. Remember how I had this stencil laying on all that inky goodness? Well, there's some color still on my stencil. So something that you can do, and this is just like a little bonus thing. Let me get a piece of cardstock. This isn't the main point of it, but instead of letting that go to waste, let me get some cardstock. Hang on, I gotta find something that somewhat would match. I don't know if this will be it, but good enough, good enough. I just grabbed a piece I had and I'm gonna, I, I think I'm gonna mist this. I'm gonna mist this pretty generously here. I'll show you in just a second. So you can see there's quite about, a bit water on there. I was just gonna there. say what I love about this live is like, it's almost like everybody's just like hanging out like a fly on the wall of our craft rooms. Like this it's is true. how it would be. If this would how it would be if we were just hanging out in each other's craft rooms, trying different techniques. And um, uh, I guess it's wouldn't that be fun? You get, a, you get a discount on the things that we're using. Yes, <laughs> so I guess yes. So I'm going to put this stencil instead of cleaning it, because again, who wants to clean? I'm going to put no. the inky side down onto it. And I have this on my flexible embossing mat. That's what allows you to make an impression with a die but I'm going to use my stencil in there. And then I'll run this through and what that, what will happen, hopefully, let's see if it happens, is it will transfer that ink from the stencil onto that cardstock and give us just like a little more watercolor fun using, and it also gives a little impression. See that little bit of impression you get too? So you've got some of that ink on the in there and you have the little impression that the stencil made. So that's better than going and cleaning your stencil off. I will go clean that off now just to show you that it does come off completely, but that's something else that's fun that you can do uh, with this technique. So it's kind of a two for one. I'm always a fan of two for one. We love a two for one. Um, Christopher, Amy's asking, is there a peach colored aqua pigment like the Pantone color of the year? Um, so there is a peach color. I, I don't know if it would be identical to the Pantone color of the year, but we do have a peach that is a beautiful peach. So I can't tell you that it matches perfectly, but we do have one that's called peach that is uh, very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Okay. Well, there you go. So this is, um, let me get a new towel here. I lost my, my towel, so I had to go get a new one. You know how that goes. And we were just talking so, about those pretty towels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, just, I think they're baby washcloths and I just use them for crafting. So I like to use a um, bit of rubbing alcohol and yeah, most of it's coming off here. You could also try using um, like a stamp cleaner and that could take off even more. But 
there you can see the stencils good to go and ready to be used again. So we got these. Easy piece. And I love a bonus. Yes. Th that's one that you could do a bunch of. Oh, and I still have my extra one. This one that's I'm letting kind of dry a bit on its own. Because that's really the best way to go. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Tammy has a question for you. Oh, and remember, if you're shopping, you don't need a code. But Christopher is mm -hmm. awesome. So he's giving you 20% all of the stencils and 20% off of these aqua pigments that we're using. And it's automatic. You don't need a code. It'll automatically happen. There's a link in the description that you can go to to um, find those products. And uh, Tammy asked, Christopher, what is the difference between the creamy aqua pigments and regular aqua pigments? Is it just the shade of the color? Sorry if this has uh, been discussed. No, so the creamy, uh, the creamy aqua pigment, I'll actually, sh I can actually show you the difference real quick. Um, okay. The, the difference between the two is they actually have a creamy base to them. So if I were to take, um, I wonder if I have a regular, uh, we'll do red, because I have a regular red and a creamy red. So if I place the regular red onto my uh, piece of cardstock here, you can see that it's a very, very sheer and, uh, I mean, I guess translucent color. Now, if I were to take the creamy red color, the creamy red color, oh, this one's never been opened before. Yours will come with little seals on them. Um, the creamy red, you'll see, it is opaque. So the difference between the uh, two yeah. is it's almost, the, the creamies are more like a, I, I don't know how, I, I don't want to say like an acrylic paint because I don't want you to be painting like your your woodwork with this, but it's it's it has it's creamy, I guess, is, is the best way to describe it. So you'll have just a sheer clear one. So if you paint this over top of something like a stamp, you'll be able to see the stamp through. If you use the creamy, you will not be able to see the stamp through. There you go. So the regular aqua pigment is more translucent and the creamy is more opaque, right? Yeah. The creamy is like yeah. basically like a watered down acrylic paint is how I would describe it. But it, it creates okay, just go. this really cool uh, kind of a, 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 I would say like a powdered look to it. Um, Erica at, no, somebody asked, if you mix the purple, uh, Audrey asked, if you applied gilded with purple, do they mix to make brown? Um, no, um, I like think here, so. no, because the gilded, I, it's like the the shimmer. Uh, how do you say it, it, it? The shimmer is, I don't. Here's the purple with the gilded. You can see it's overlapping here, and it's not brown. This kind of coppery color was that poppy field color, but. Um, so it, the, the regular purple, the violet aqua pigment ink is more translucent. And then the shimmer in this gilded is a little more opaque. So it kind of sits on top. So you don't get a brown look. No. I would say they stand See, on their own would probably be the they, best way to put it. They, that would be the much easier way to explain it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, they, they stand <laughs> on their own. They, the, the aqua pigments, when it comes to the metallics and the regular aqua pigments, they, they will mix together if you mix them together in the sense of like on a palette. But when you're actually applying them to the paper, what's generally going to happen is the aqua pigment is going to try to soak into that paper almost immediately, whereas the metallics are going to sit a little bit longer. So you will have the, a situation where they will definitely be, uh, you know, they're going to be sitting right, ne right next to one another. They're not going to really um, overwhelm one another and mix together. Okay, I am going to heat set, so I'm going to unmute myself. But somebody asked um, about bringing the stick, <laughs> bringing Sticky back. That's that's a great song. About bringing the <laughs> Sticky back to. <laughs> if I could sing, I would sing, but I can't. So, I love it. Can you bring Sticky back? <laughs> uh, so if you for the stick and stamp mat, if it has lost its Sticky, unfortunately, it has. Uh, it, it's that it has come to the end of its life. So. Uh, we are working on a product where you could potentially re-stick the mat. Uh, it's still really in its early development phases. Um, with, with the price point of the stick and stamp mat, I think that realistically, if you've gotten your life out of it, uh, it, it just might be time for a new stick and stamp mat. But uh, there, there are many different techniques that you can do if the sticky is completely gone. You can use the, the mat mist and you can really uh, go ahead and apply 
uh, a generous amount of the mat mist on top and then, you know, gently uh, try to uh, rub over your stick and stamp mat. And that will generally it will bring back the sticky to it. The only thing is you don't really want to apply any type of an adhesive uh, race sticker on top of it because the the like like Jennifer said earlier, the adhesive that's on top of that has been specifically formulated to be able to use with 80 pound and above cardstock. So if you're applying, trying to put a different type of adhesive on the top, I, I, I wouldn't be able to guarantee that you're not gonna see breakage and ripping, you know, with your with your cardstock. So I would say at that point, just grab yourself, just grab yourself a new mat. But if it truly is just an issue that there's stuff stuck onto it, the mat mist will rejuvenate it. But it's generally, if the sticky is completely gone, it's just reached the end of the day. That's all. Yeah, I think it, it's one of those, it's like cutting plates on a die cut machine. Eventually you right. will have to replace. Um, I do want to do, to mention, I can't have you here without mentioning the ultra fine gilded. If you're looking oh. for the most beautiful gold embossing powder that gives smooth results. You know how sometimes when you do heat embossing and it kind of gives like an orange peel texture? Look how smooth one layer of that embossing powder go. Uh, come on, focus. There we go. Can you see how smooth that is? It's just it's gorgeous. And it's like the right gold. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It's just gorgeous. Now, I... Um, this is a great, a great gold. I think for my technique, I'm going to double up the heat embossing so that it's more embossed, so it's thicker. You don't have to do this, but you know me. And that, and that is, the, the reason for that is we, that one is a triple milled embossing powder. So without oh. getting too technical, because I think that it, you know, we'll lose some folks because it, we lost me whenever I first figured out what it was. It's, we, whatever embossing powder is made, it's milled into a very, very fine plastic. Then, then if you're doing a fine embossing powder, then it's generally milled a second time. For an ultra fine, which is what we have for the, the gilded, that's been milled three times. So that just means that it is the finest particle that you can possibly get of the powder. And that's what makes it so smooth. If you have another embossing powder that you have that, that, that peeling with, it's generally just because it hasn't been milled as many times, which is not a big deal. It's still a great embossing powder. But if you want it to be super, super smooth, it just has to be milled as many times as possible. And you can only mill it up to three times because if you do four times, then it just becomes dust. And then you can't uh. really it anymore. Um, but yeah, it's just because it's been milled multiple times. And that's honestly because I'm obsessed with very smooth embossing powder. That's, that's, it, it's it been really is a smooth. <laughs> Here's a, a good reason for a sticky mat too. When I first put my cardstock in here and did the first stamping to heat emboss, I put it right in the center rectangle. There's guidelines here. And now I'm putting it back in. My stamp's still in the same place. And I'm stamping with Versamark ink again, right on top of the um, heat embossing we've already done. So yet I've heat embossed that already. I'm just putting more Versamark ink on top of that heat embossing. It seems a little weird, but now I can put on more of the gilded embossing powder and it'll give more of a raised look. Um, double embossing is just a fun way to make your embossing stand up a bit more. And since this is really the focal point of the card, I figured why not? And because I used the, see, you can see the, the grid there or the, the little marking for A2 card. I put it there in the first place and stamped it. And then the second time I put it in the exact same place and I was able to stamp this long stamp. I couldn't have put this cardstock in the corner because my stamp would have been hanging out of the, the stamping tool. So I'm gonna heat set this again. Um, Christopher, uh, somebody wants to know while I heat set, I'm gonna mute myself. Is the sale yep. only online or can you shop your physical store as well? I wish I could. Well, not only can you shop our physical store, but my my friends, this sale is going until Friday for all of you. So it is not just for today. Um, it will be until this Friday. So I don't want anybody to think that they have to rush and shop right this very second. I mean, obviously, get, you know, get your orders in if you want the things quickly. But uh, this sale, we are offering it until Friday uh, for um, the products that we're using. And also these products will not run out of stock because we make them all here. 
So uh, get, you, can, you can shop in the physical location for this sale or you can shop online and it will automatically give you your discount. Uh, it'll give you your discount at the register here at Brutus Monroe as well. And we'd love to see you because we have so many fun new things in store. We have a lot of things in store that actually aren't online. So you make the, uh, the aqua pigments in-house and you do your embossing powder in-house too, right? We do, and we make our stencils in-house as well. And your stencils. So you're not gonna run out of things we're using today. That's kind of nice. Yep, we won't. Yes, somebody asked, this is a hot dog holder. I don't, I think it was Ricky. Um, I think I got that idea from Ricky. It's just easy to kind of funnel back in uh, you could also use a coffee filter, but I don't know. I reuse the hot dog filter 99 times. I don't think I've ever made hot dogs in my house, which might be an unfortunate <laughs> thing for my kids. We get them at the baseball field, but um, they're very Look handy that for that. Background. My word. <laughs> okay. Can That's you see? Hold beautiful. on. Yeah, come on. Focus. focus. Is it focusing? Come on. You can do it. There we go. Look at how smooth that is. So I didn't have to do two layers of embossing to get that smoothness. I did it so I got more dimension. That you could do like another time those, if you want. That looks like one of those $12 cards. You know the ones I'm talking about <laughs> that you see at the store that are, uh, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful, beautiful card. But instead, we'll spend $4,000 on our handmade cards, Correct. right? Correct. Well, I mean, really for that, for that technique, it's, it's just, a, a, I think, an embossing powder. And a, but I mean, you can get in the hole pretty quickly <laughs> once, you, once you look at the other things. But that, that card, uh, you could make quite a few yep. of them for, for a lower amount than a $12 card. But we all know that we all get ourselves into <laughs> quite a pickle yes, we do. the other colors. Because, uh, I mean, you don't need just black cardstock. You need 17 more colors of cardstock. And then, of course, you see the gilded embossing powder. And then you see the bubbly, which is champagne. And then you see the sterling. And then you see the pearl. So I can understand how 4,000 adds up very quickly. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you know, I, exaggeration. Name of the game. But, you well, know, yeah, but I, I just... That's, yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about how these you can watercolor with. Um, I am using... Uh, somebody said the video froze. Let me know if it froze for all of you, because I don't see it frozen here. No. You might want to refresh if it froze oh. for you. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm using a dark black cardstock. This is the Tim Holtz black uh, cardstock. I have it linked below. I just like it because it's really dark black. And um, I'm going to use the gilded and the poppy field, which have that metallic to it. And I'm just going to paint in some of this color. So and I just have thick, a. Right? If I remember correctly, it's a really sturdy card. Yes. Stack, I think. Yes, it yeah. is. It's. It reminds me. It's. I think it's a little bit thinner than, um, not your mama's. Yeah. I think it's a little bit thinner, but it's a the black version. Yeah. So you can paint. Very... Yeah, you can paint in. Watercolor with these on top of dark color cardstocks, and you'll get that metallic watercolor look. Now, I'm not going to have time to do all this painting in here, but the heat embossing will resist this color that we're putting on top. And later I can just, when it's dry, I can wipe all the extra paint or the extra aqua pigment from the embossed areas. All right, while I do some of this, tell me, tell me what you got going on over there. All right, so I am just at the point now where I am just going to add a sentiment to to my card so it's it's completed and um actually i just realized up through this whole entire time that i can zoom in <laughs> so we're gonna zoom in and uh we're gonna, we're gonna show you uh what it looks like kind of up close because I, I think that it, it's it's better to be able to see kind of that marbling and the uh the the way that it really stands out and then you can also see kind of how that, that punchetto in the background uh, I'm hoping that it's showing up on the screen that you can see yep. how there are tiny butterflies that are cut out of the background. And it's just, again, kind of that, aha, how did that, how did that happen? And you can also see the marbling on the Nacho Mamas much better. Now that I'm zoomed in and not, you know, 45 feet away from you, showing you the, <laughs> this, this is all new technology for me. We just recently updated our, nice. uh, our studio and we, we got new cameras and new, all sorts of fancy things. So 
it's it's I've, we've come a long way. We talked about this, uh, Jennifer, when we were meeting about something else that we're going to talk about on the live. Um, oh yeah. When I, I, I first started, I had uh, <laughs> my iPhone and two popsicle sticks, a roller, and a little bit of hot glue, and that that was how I I did it. And I thought I had it made then, but now to be able to actually have a full production studio to do these things and really really makes things easier. That's for sure. It sure does. Well, I I have Mike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he does all the yeah. things because I can't do all the things. I can't do all the things. So I am just painting with the um, these the gilded and the poppy fields aqua pigment. And you can see how that metallic shows up against the black cardstock. And I could I'm putting it on pretty thick, so you can see how the black doesn't really show through that paint much. But if you want to add water, like I'll add water to some of this gilded here. And then when I paint it in, it can be a little more sheer. So see how it's a little more sheer here? So you can kind of play around with the metallic. And he's got some of these, um, like that Wizard of Oz set has some of these pretty metallics. Yeah, it's really, the, truly, the if you get the entire Wizard of Oz set, which there is a bundle available for that, if you were to get the full Wizard of Oz set, that has enough metallics in it to really do the entire technique that you're doing. Because you do get one uh -huh. in the it's called Yellow Brick Road, and that one uh, I think it's would very be similar. absolutely perfect for you to, uh, to use. Nice, nice. So yeah. if I had some other colors, like I think it'd be pretty, I need to get the sterling, I need to find it. I, I know I have it here somewhere. And drop those into some of these other spots. So it'd be all this kind of coppery, the, the gilded, those are these are fun and now this card I'm not going to have time to finish it today but I'll continue to paint it in and then what I plan to do is let me get the I plan to this is the scent, scent lace sentiments sentiments of lace yep. I plan to do the which one was I going to do here um oh the hello my friend I'm going to use that same gilded gold embossing powder and just do just heat set it right or uh, heat emboss it right here and then put it trim this background down and add it to a white note card so there's a little white trim and you would have a, a reasonably quick very shiny like intense looking card you could use a dark like a colored card stock but i think the black is really fun oh, yeah. uh the the pearl somebody said which are the pearl where is that Sorry. which ones are the pearl pigment um, so the pearl uh, is going to be the one that's literally just called pearl. Uh, that would be the only one that has like a quote unquote pearl pigment to it. But there yep. are several others uh, that are going to have what we would call metallic. But the pearl is really the only pearl one that we have currently. Okay. We did have some that we released with our fairy release uh, last year, but those ones have been uh, have been retired. We retire the uh the aqua pigments about every quarter only because we do come out with new aqua pigments pretty much yeah. every release and if we kept all of them there would just be <laughs> we would have hundreds and hundreds of colors for sure you know this would look really neat also with like a you could do uh you could do white embossing with this and color in with the metallic if you want a little less metallic but i think lots of metallic is good oh i love how that turned out i love that on the on the not not your mama's for sure. All right. Yeah, I made it, it's, it's very, it's, it makes it very subtle because this is a very, very graphic stamp set. I mean, I'll show you what it looks like if you were to, I mean, if you were to stamp this out in black, um, I mean, it, it's a very, very graphic, very, very bold That's stamp. Cool. Um, but, you know, you can still make it very muted and very, you know, very, I guess, elegant by just stamping it, you know, with the, the white or this would look beautiful. And, could you imagine this on black with the gold? Uh, I mean, woo, yeah, beautiful. so pretty. Um, I am going to, this is the one that I was trying to let dry on its own. You can see it's pretty dry up here, but there's still a little wet here in the center. So I'm gonna heat set this. Christopher, do you mind talking about the event this summer? Cause I'm really Absolutely. excited about this. I sure Mike, will. Can you so, put up the uh, image for me? So, so we have uh, the Create Your Own event, which is something that we have done uh, in the past. This is our sixth year that we are doing the Create Your Own event. And I'm super, super, I mean, honored, uh, tickled, uh, elated. Uh, I couldn't be, I don't know uh, there's an amount of words to 
uh, say how excited I am about who will be teaching with me this year. So we have, of course, Miss Jennifer McGuire, who we are demoing with today, myself, Kathy Z, Christina Warner, and Laura Basson. So all five of us will be teaching classes. I'll be teaching two, Jennifer, Kathy, Christina, and Laura. Their classes uh, are pre-recorded and will be streamed into uh, the event because as you can imagine, having all four of them in one place, we, we, we simply couldn't have enough security. Uh, so they are going to be sending, uh, sending in all of uh, the videos are going to be directly streamed to everybody. Uh, all of the in-person spots sold out uh, within about five minutes. So there aren't any in-persons left. Oh, but my there goodness. Are lots, of, lots of virtual spots left. So if you want to join us virtually, uh, it's going to be a really fun event because all of us are doing what we love what we love most about paper crafting. So each class is gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna be touching upon what we all love to do. So you're gonna learn a lot of techniques uh, at the event. I mean, you're gonna learn a lot of techniques at the event and we're just gonna have a lot of fun because uh, we're all friends in real life and I think it's gonna be uh, a, fun, a fun event. Now, you, you know, you're taking a risk by having the, these ladies together, right? I could not wait. <laughs> I could not, I could not wait. I, I, whenever I was first uh, first thinking about who uh, we were going to work with and who, how we were going to do it, uh, I was like, I must have these uh, these. What did you say? The I can't remember what how you how you described the group, but I, I'm excited to have them regardless. <laughs> well, we, we we tend to be a little bit of trouble. We've all known each other for a very long time, so you know. Wait. And, but we all work really well together, so I think it'll be fun. And I always say that, you know, the, in that picture, you you got you in the center surrounded by all these hot babes. You know, what are you going to oh, do with yourself? Be, yeah, the Christopher and the babes. And I, I cannot. <laughs> I, and, it's, and I'm and I'm truly. I, I said this whenever we were having our our meeting last time that it's it's such a huge honor to me because I just uh, you know ten years ago, well, it'll be ten years in December, was watching all of these incredibly talented uh, ladies and. Now I get to work alongside them, and I, I always say that I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and uh, I really, really am. I'm the luckiest guy. Well, you know, we, we are very thankful. I, I'm very thankful to have lots of dude crafters in this industry because, you know, you keep us in check too, right? Keep us in check. <laughs> Yes, well, I we, wanted... we, and also we, we think differently when we craft, so I think we need both. We do, uh, to be, we to do. Be, to be, to be, yes. I wanted to show one more thing that I like to do. Christopher and the Babes. Hi, Betsy. Yeah, Christopher and the perfect. Babes. That's that's our name. I think I'll I'm going to do. Oh, that would be great. We should. <laughs> I want to do. Uh, do you have a moment for me to finish one of these off? Yeah, I have all the time in the world for you, my love. OK, well, my my kids might be disagreeing with that. Yeah, my son's say, at those, baseball. Those, you need to ask them, not me. <laughs> no, Lila's, Lila will be fine. Colin's at baseball and my husband's at the golf course. So, you know, all is right in the world. We're all doing the things we like to do. Lila's probably crocheting. Yes. Okay, so what I did is I, this is one of my favorite go-to designs when I am um, have like an inky background and I'm not really sure where to, you know, what to do with it because I don't want to cover any of it up. I really wanted a lot of that to show. So this is what I, this is the design I go for a lot, but I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, I'm going to glue this down. I got my Gina K connect because, you know. Mine's on the way. Mine is on the way. <laughs> gosh, love that stuff. And then the I'm going to take a thin strip of gold. I might stack it up the a little bit though and you know what and i'm going to show this real quick while you're doing that so please do me, i want you to see how i'm going to zoom in what happens with the creamy oh. as it drops so oh. the creamy i mean for lack of a better term it kind of oxidizes like it kind of like it, it, it shifts and it changes and the, the the creamy color kind of moves in into it and it's uh it's it really becomes almost like a powder base so this is the regular red how that how that dried and as you can see how this one is drying it, it creates almost like a white border and i don't know it's it's a really really cool product and That's it would work neat. really really great with with jennifer's technique that she just did because if you drop a little bit of the creamy in with the other regular colors you're going to see this this really really cool uh, shift as you're yeah. as you're using yeah nice Okay, so I need to, I need to try the creamy 
painting with this. That would be fun. Oh, right. yes. Okay, so I, all I'm doing here, I promise I have a point to share that this is pretty simple here. Oh, let me find some scissors. Um, all I did here was I stacked a couple pieces of thin white cardstock, and then on top of it, I put uh, a thin piece of gold cardstock. So it's got a little dimension. It kind of stands up against the edge there. And by the way, this is uh, the Brutus Monroe Not Your Mama's cardstock. This is so heavyweight that even if I had a bunch on here, this, this card is not going to flop. Uh, there's nothing worse than spending a lot of time on a card and it flops, you know, like it just... Or when somebody opens a card and it kind of goes, you know, flips back. You want it to be nice and strong on there. All right. Okay. Um, now let me show you what I did. I started this off screen. Are you still there, Christopher? Yep, I'm here. Is he still there? Okay, just making sure, just making sure. Okay, this is the You Are My Sunshine. I've used this in videos before, and it's actually, if I ever get my not so crafty, or my, sorry, not so crafty, my favorite crafty things video up. Um, this is on my favorites list, this die set is. It's got the You Are My Sunshine, and there's the letters, and then the shadow for it. But I'm just using the word sunshine today, and I wanna show you what I did. Yes, thank you, I'm sorry about that sound effect. Um, <laughs> this is a, the stick and stamp mat, and I t used the letter, I put the letters for sunshine right along the line here. So I could get them all lined up how I wanted. And you can even do it on, like where you can actually do it so, let me show you, you can do it so it's half on, because remember this decorative edge here has no stick. This way it's kind of half on the stick, half not. Just depends on what you're using, how sticky your mat is, whatever. This is a brand new one. But these are letter die cuts. I already glued, I already die cut and glued them together. I did one from white cardstock, one from black glossy, and glued those together and then I put them on the sticky mat so I can get the positioning just how I want it. So they're all just stuck there temporarily. Then what I do is, and this is one of the advantages of a sticky mat because it has more stick than other kind of grip mats. Then I take a piece of tape and I could pick up either of these. I'll take this one here. And I'm going to press the tape onto the top of the letters, but you don't want the tape to touch the sticky mat because if Sticky touches sticky, they become one, right? So I'm just pressing on top of the sticky, on top of the, oh, there, here I go and do it too. None um, none I none press it, more yeah, I press it down, it, it was fine, on top of those letters, and then I can pull up all the letters together. I lost my little doodad, but I'll come back to it. And now see how they're all perfectly positioned. And the stick on this was just the right amount of stick to do that. And now I can put glue on the back of my letters. And then, and this is again, Gina K Connect in a fine tip bottle. This is how I always put down like individual letters. And then I come over here and I can see through the tape and see my letters to get it, it say you want it straight or centered, but I want to have it right here, right along that ledge. So now I'll place it down like, mm, we'll do it about like that. And then I'm gonna press it down and leave that tape on there while it dries. So that helps me, I didn't have to try to do each one and mess up the spacing, run out of room, say you wanted it centered. You wanna make, this is very helpful for that. So now I have another one set up for another card that I can do afterwards. And the sticky mat's very helpful for that. So that's another great use for the stick and stamp mat. And, so, and while you're doing that, we had a question about the blending buddy. So I'm oh, gonna yes. show that real quick if you don't mind. So the blending buddy, uh, I actually came up with this in the Starbucks drive through line. Don't ask me how this, this happened. But with your stick and stamp <laughs> mat, if you are using a piece of A2 cardstock and you wanna blend on it. So I, I found that I was doing a lot of blending and what was happening is as I was blending the corners, I was I was getting into my sticky area. So I was like, I don't want to do that because then I could ruin my stick and stamp mat. So I developed the blending buddy, which fits perfectly over that A2 size area. And then you place your A2 size piece of paper in there. And I did kind of one step further. There's also little flaps in here that you can place your stencil into the flaps and it will hold your step. I mean, you're still going to want to use a little bit of tape just in case. But you can see these little flaps pop up, and you can fit your stencil inside of those flaps. 
and it, it holds That's it in place so uh, with your tape. So then when you go in and let's say, you know, you're just, there might actually be ink left on here. You go in and you start blending. What happens is now you've blended in the corner, but your thick and stamp mat, whenever you lift this up, the blending buddy protects your mat. So you lift this up and you can see I've got no ink on the outside of my area. Uh... So I actually keep the thick and stamp mat with the blending buddy on it at all times because I blend a lot of card panels. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a heavy handed and I, I like to blend often. So with that, now I have my blending buddy. So now the rest of my mat, when I peel this off, there's nothing on the outside. Cause I saw a lot of folks that were like putting post-it tape and they were doing all sorts of stuff to mask it off. And I was like, let's just create a product that will allow you to mask off the rest of the outside. And then also it comes with the inside piece so that if you have something that you're blending like a, a border or something, you can use this piece as well. So it just, it just makes it super simple. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah. I've got what, I've got that over my drawer. I forgot about that. I need to get that yeah. out again. Cause then you can it keep the, keep your um, sticky mat cleaner longer. Oh yes. All right. Absolutely. Um, somebody talked about they don't like separate little dots. Look at the dot for the I is actually on the Y. I had to cut it off because I'm only using the sunshine. So if you use this as it was really intended, that is contained. All I right. do not like uh, the dots on the eyes either, and that's why I designed it that way. <laughs> smart, smart. And so I'm going to stamp hello my, because I call Lila my sunshine. So I did hello my sunshine. There you go. And it, I feel like the sunshine sentiment works with it because the shine in the background. Oh, yes. So there you go. That's beautiful. And it really isn't, it doesn't take, the, really the best way to do this background technique that I showed is to um, let it dry on its own. So you can put, you know, you could put on your desk like three pieces of watercolor paper then mist them all with a little bit of water, lay a stencil on each, and then drop some pig aqua pigments on top, give it a spritz with water, and walk away. And come back, and you would have these dried, beautiful backgrounds that you can very quickly turn into cards. Oh, yeah, and just grab a whole, and grab a whole bunch of stencils. I mean, we all have yeah. a gaggle of stencils. I mean, I know we yep. do. And just grab a whole bunch of stencils and watercolor paper and do like six or seven at a time. Let them dry. And I mean, I knew that stencil screamed your name. So that's, I had, yes. to, I had to make sure you had that one. <laughs> yes, I, I was thinking about doing using this one today and I just didn't get a chance to do it. But, um, you know, really any stencil, even detailed ones will work for this. And by the way, when you do like a, the big background, like I did before, you get these little strips that you can save for additional cards. So there oh, you yes. have it. Um, that almost looks like washi tape, huh? Oh, it does, yeah, yes. If you yes, use yes, that yes. little strip, you can just use that little strip and it really, it almost gives, yep. you know what it gives, it looks like to me, it almost looks like a gel plate press, doesn't it? It does, it really does. That's really cool. But it's, gosh, so simple to do. So simple. And you can see the shine. I hope you can see the shine on there. Just so much fun. All right. I think we have some, um, some more questions. Let's see. So I'm going to come back up to the screen. Let me, we'll answer a few more questions. We, we're going to try to answer as many as we can. Um, yes. But as far as what's on sale, Christopher has put all of his stencils and all of the aqua pigments that come in the jars and the bottles like this, those are all, he makes them in house, so he's not gonna run out. And those are all 20% off. You don't need a code. It'll just yeah. automatically through Friday. Um, some of the other, I did show a few other things. Those aren't included in the sale, but um, the gilded gold, yeah. it, it's a good gold, I tell you. Yeah. Um, so, and then somebody asked about the pricing of the create your own ending. I saw somebody say it was like over 400. That's not right. I'm no. seeing it on my screen. It's not, no. it, it it's is, much it lower price. It's $300 until the 31st of this month. So the idea behind that pricing, because everybody's always like, why does it change? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We are oh, going to attempt to end. budget ourselves for all of the product by the end of this month. Because as most of you can imagine, putting on an event of this size is a massive undertaking. So with yeah. that being said, in order for us to make sure that we have enough products for every person that is coming to it, because we're launching even new, I mean, everything's new that's coming to the event, but there are some new 
product categories that are coming back for this event, such as inks and things like that. So we have to really make sure that we know how many we have to order. So with that change in the price, that gives us the ability, you know, the extra $49 that happens on the 31st or on the 1st of April is just so that we can make sure that when we have to get extra products, that that, that helps us with a little bit of a more of a rush to get those products. So that's the only reason that it changes in price. Yeah. But the early bird pricing is $300 from right this very moment until the end of the month or while supplies last because we do not have an unlimited amount of space uh obviously you would think with virtual you're like oh well you could sell a million of them no we only have so much space because we can't overload the teachers whenever everybody is teaching uh but that is the price currently until the 31st of this month awesome and uh um you can see you can see more about it there, but basically it's going to be a really casual, fun event where each of us are kind of focusing on our thing, what we enjoy doing. I might be using the aqua pigments again. I don't know. This is fun, but I it, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of because we're going to be working with Christopher to design the products that you know he's going to design them, but we're going to work with him on what kind of things we want to do. Um, somebody asked if. I did this where I painted in with the aqua pigment. You can use any embossing powder for that. I just used his gold gilded because it's a beautiful gold embossing powder, but you could use whatever embossing powders you have. Mm -hmm. uh, some more questions. Oh, here's a good one. Janet asks, if you added the metallic, so like if you added maybe the pearl, um, the pearl aqua pigment to like a, the fuchsia, would that give yeah. you a colored? Absolutely. The only thing that I always preface when I say, you know, you add the pearl to the colors is you are going to need a lot of color to the pearl because the pearl is, is going to overtake whatever color you put in it. So I would say to one drop of pearl, you'll need like 10 drops of the color. So uh, by all means, mix and match, create your own ending. That's what we're all about here at Brutus Monroe. But just know that it is going to be, it's going to be a test of, of figuring out which, because it's not going to be super intense because the way we make the aqua pigments is we literally take a pearl base if we create a metallic and we take a powder pigment to mix together to make an actual color. So when you're adding a liquid to a liquid, it's gonna take a lot more of the liquid to make sure that it changes color, but you can absolutely do it. Just know that you're gonna to have to do some experimentation with it, that's all. But that's half the fun, right? That's half oh, the yeah, fun. Absolutely. Um, is there a difference? Somebody asked if there's a difference between watercolor and hot press and cold press. I am not a pro at this. Do yeah. you know the answer? Go for yeah, it. Yeah, so cold press is generally going to have a smooth side and then a rougher side. Hot press is going to be a very rough, very toothy um, uh, watercolor paper. 99.9% .9 of the watercolor paper that you are going to be sold in our industry is going to be a cold press. And that's because we want to stamp on it and we need a smooth side. You will not find a smooth side with a hot pressed watercolor paper. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just use what I can get. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Luckily, we sell it, so I just have an unlimited supply. <laughs> well, there you go. Good. As Shannon said, Christopher, do you have a video demonstrating the foil reactive embossing powders? Curious to know how they work. Um, do you we have a do. video? So we only have one foil reactive embossing powder. Um, I believe if you go back, and I can send it to Jennifer to link up. Uh, we, it's, it's the, the video is showing how to use it with a laminator. Uh, but you can also use it with a heat gun. So I'll send over that video, but I can always do another demo with it and show you how to use it. It's it's really, really cool stuff, really cool stuff. Okay, yeah, if you send me that, I'll add it to the description. Okay. Um, Carol, I can answer this one. Can you use Not Your Mama's cardstock and the Better Press? Yes, you can, you can. And it gives you a little bit more of an impression than regular cardstock because it's thicker, so it presses more in. So you definitely can. And it works um, great with the glimmer machine too. It's beautiful with the glimmer machine. Oh, that's right, because it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Cox asked, can you use a small sprayer to spritz paper? Uh, do you mean water? I, I, that's what I was using to mist it. Yeah, any kind of mist bottle would be fine for that. Um, Melissa asks, this is a good one for you. I just got a new one of those sticky mats, but I find it a bit too sticky. Do you have a safe way to de-stick it? Yep, just stick it to your shirt. So um, I always say you can either Pick stick one. it to your shirt or you can take like a microfiber cloth and tack it off. But what I do is I just stick it to myself 
and then just pull it off and it should be the perfect amount of adhesive. And the great thing is, is if you wanna bring that adhesive back, you would just clean it because it's just going to have a little bit of lint or, or you know, fibers from your shirt. But I do it all the time. You'll actually see me in classes where I'll take a brand new one, stick it to my shirt and pull it off. And it's the perfect amount of, of stickiness. Yep. That works well. That's what I do. I or it'll I stick it on my easy. sleeve. Yeah. yeah. It'll become, I, I, I equate it to like a cast iron skillet. Over time, you'll notice that your stick and stamp mat is exactly the way that you want it to be. And it lasts that way for quite some time once it gets to that level. Yeah. But the stickiness that's on it the very first time is basically the stickiness yeah. to last. I mean, I'd say probably about six to eight months your stick and stamp mat would be good for. Well, I think of, I think of it as like a die cutting plate. When you first get a die cutting plate, it makes really loud noises. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, you've got to break it in a little bit too. Okay. I, I think I got most of the questions. Um, I have, like mine. <laughs> so I What'd use you say? Mine. See? this is what I use mine within an, I mean, within an inch of their lives. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is yeah. what machine is that for? It's for the, um, the, the switch machine. This gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to do giveaway if that's okay with you. I Maybe. have, um, three different, uh, aqua pigments here. I've got the turquoise the Orion and the Cosmo. And I'm gonna give that away to somebody who's left a comment here today. Mike picked a person and it, the winner is Kathy Lane. Kathy Lane with a K. If you go to my website and email me through my website, your address, we will send these out to you along with a few other fun share him and kindness goodies. In, in fact, I'll include one of those fun blocks. So um, okay. you're the winner, so be sure to check that out. Okay, good. I think we should probably wrap it up. We've been going a long time, I'm sorry. Uh, th this has been great. I mean, I feel like we just started. <laughs> I know, I know. We need to do this again, because I feel like there's more things we can do with these, and also you have other fun. You've got glazes and an amazing selection of embossing powders. I think we, we should yeah, do- Yeah, we make the glazes in-house too, which is great. It's like a science lab. That would be fun. I need really to come is. play. Yes. Please. Um, so just a reminder, the aqua pigments are and stencils are on sale 20% off over at Brutus Monroe. Sometimes I call Christopher Brutus, but Brutus is his dog's name, right? Every, everybody does. You're not the only one. <laughs> it's just a habit. It's like Gina. Yeah. I call her Gina K. And yeah, I, ca uh -huh. I call Heidi Simon a lot too. Yeah. With Simon says stamp. It's just a habit. Yep. Um, so the uh, aqua pigments and the stencils are all 20% automatically. You don't need a code. There's a link below that you can shop from. You can also find information there for the create your own uh, ending event. Is that what's called? Create your own ending yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. event that's in July that um, Christopher and his babes will be a part of. Um, and, uh, th I think that's everything. Anything that's else it. you wanted to share? No, I think, I think that's it. I mean, we covered so many, uh, different topics today, but with only really one product that's, and I think that's really cool to, to see how one product can be so incredibly yeah. versatile and how you can do so many things with it. So again, I think it'll be great when we, we go live again with another one product that I'm sure we'll put on sale at that time as well. And you can see what we can do with another one of those one products and, and see how, if you're just getting started, just grab yourself a stencil and a couple of aqua pigments and you could make so many beautiful oh, yeah. cards very quickly. And yeah. I think, I think Lila and I are going to line some up and just go to town. Maybe oh. next, next time we'll either do fun things you can do with the sticky mat or fun things you can do with embossing powders. I don't know. Oh we'll yeah. Have to think about embossing that. powders would be fun. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you too, my friend. All right. Well, thank you all for watching and uh, be sure to hit see the description if you have any questions about anything and uh, have a wonderful week. Bye, Christopher. Bye, everyone.